जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे गोपी जन बल्ला गिरीवर धारी गोपी जन बल्ला गिरीवर धारी सौद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना सौद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना जामुन थीरा बन छी जामुन थीर बन छी जय राध माधव कुंजबिहारे जाया राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बल्ला गिरीवर धारी गोपी जन बल्ला गिरीवर धारी जसौद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना जसौद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना जामुन थीरा छी जामुन थीरा छी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Jaya Prabhupada, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pan, Jaya Prabhu Pan, Hari Pan, Hari Pan, Hari Pan, Hari Pan, Hari Pan, Hari Bhav, 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 Well, you made it. Neither sleet nor storm, no dark of night. You made it. Looks like a lot of people didn't make it, who were probably intending to come, but when they saw the condition. Now, there was a topic that was selected because somebody wanted to hear a particular topic, but they're not present. Is that right? 
Yes? So that means I can talk about whatever you want to talk about, right? <laughs> Well, there was a suggestion just to continue from this afternoon. And for those of you that weren't with us this afternoon, there was a Bhagavatam installation and the topic was how important it is to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Why do we value Bhagavatam the way that we value the Bhagavatam? And I was thinking that a nice topic to speak about is how to hear the Bhagavatam in such a way we get the best benefit. Nice topic? There's a few... Uh, outstanding references. I think I'll start with the one that comes at the end of uh, Canto 1, Chapter 3. And it's connected with something that we spoke about this morning, or this afternoon, where the, the, one of the six questions of the sages, Chapter 1, where are religious principles taking shelter now that Krishna has left? Because at the end of Dwarpa Yuga, Krishna departs and Kali Yuga shortly thereafter begins. Now Kali Yuga has begun. Where were the disprinciples taking shelter? And the answer is Srimad Bhagavatam. That comes at the end of chapter 3, almost the end of chapter 3. And then there's this nice explanation of how to properly receive. Krishna in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. Of course, Sutta is the speaker, and Sutta has heard from Shukadeva Goswami the whole Srimad Bhagavatam, and he's fixed in his convictions about the merit of Srimad Bhagavatam. read a few verses, they're very nice. This Srimad Bhagavatam, starting with text 40. There go the kids, okay. This Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of God, and it is compiled by Srila Vyasa Dev, the incarnation of God. It is meant for the ultimate good of all people, And it is all successful, all blissful, and all perfect. Text 41. Sri Vyasadeva delivered it to his son, who is the most respected among the self-realized after extracting the cream of all Vedic literatures and histories of the universe. That's what Vyasadeva did. And then Shukadeva spoke to Maharaj Prikshit, who sat surrounded by sages in the bank of the Ganges, waiting death without taking food or drink. Then comes this Krishna Sva Dharmo Dhamo Pagate. This Bhagavad Purana is as brilliant as the sun, and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in this age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. And then the final verse. O oh, learned Brahmana, Brahmanas, this is Sutta speaking to the sages, when Shukadeva Goswami recited Bhagavatam in the presence of Emperor Prikshit, I heard him with 
rapt attention. So that's the focus, how to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, with rapt attention. And thus, by his mercy, I learned the Bhagavatam from that great and powerful sage. Now I shall try to make you hear the very same thing I heard from him and as I have realized it. And I'm going to read the one paragraph purport. One can certainly see directly in the presence, oh, excuse me, the presence of Lord Sri Krishna in the pages of the Bhagavatam. If one has heard it from a self-realized great soul like Shukadeva Goswami, one cannot, however, learn Bhagavatam from a bogus hired reciter whose aim of life is to earn some money out of such recitation and employ the earnings in sex indulgence. No one can learn Bhagavatam who is associated with persons engaged in sex life. This is the secret of learning Bhagavatam. No one can learn Bhagavatam from one who interprets the text by his mundane scholarship. One has to learn Bhagavatam from the representative of Shukadeva Goswami and no one else if one at all wants to see Lord Krishna in the pages. That is the process, and there is no alternative. Sutta Goswami is a bona fide representative of Shukadeva Goswami because he wants to present the message which he received from the great learned Brahmana. Shukadeva Goswami presented Bhagavatam as he heard it from his great father, and so also Sutta Goswami is presenting Bhagavatam as he heard it from Shukadeva Goswami, simply by hearing is not all, semicolon. One must realize the text with proper attention. The word nivishta means that Sutta Goswami drank the juice of Bhagavatam through his ears. That is the real process of receiving Bhagavatam. One should hear it with rapt attention from the real person, and then he can at once realize the presence of Lord Krishna at every page. The secret of knowing Bhagavatam is mentioned here. Listen. No one can give rapt attention who is not pure in mind. No one can be pure in mind who is not pure in action. No one can be pure in action who is not pure in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. But somehow or other, if someone hears with rapt attention from the right person, at the very beginning one can assuredly see Lord Krishna in person in the pages of the Bhagavatam. The last time I heard this verse being discussed, it was Rabindra Saruprabhu, and it was very profound and amazing, his way of using words and presenting our teachings is very wonderful. The, the, the emphasis is on this rapt attention, nivishta, being perfectly attentive. That's how to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam with nivishta kind of attention. This is how we should also hear the holy name when, when having kirtan or chanting japa because the offense is its opposite, inattention. Or, you know, distracted distracted chanting, distracted hearing. And that's going to be there until one becomes pure. So, as Prabhupada said, somehow or other. But somehow or other is, is at least from our side we make effort. And something, this sequence is there, something that will assist rapt attention by having a mind that's pure. So mantra meditation or meditation on the message of Srimad Bhagavatam is bringing the mind to 
Shuddha Sattva, to Krishna. Krishna in the form of his name, Krishna in the form of the Bhagavatam, which is also none different than him. And so, in other words, what's being said in relation to the Bhagavatam also applies to chanting, which we do. Minimally, we're doing chanting, and we should also be hearing Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. And by bringing the mind to the Supreme Pure, the mind becomes pure. If it's not pure, or given that it's not yet pure, it becomes purified that way. Then Prabhupada writes, no one can be pure in mind who's not pure in action. It's kind of outside in, but actually it's, it starts from the inside. It starts with the soul, free will choice, desiring to be connected to Krishna once again. After loitering in the material world for countless lifetimes, becoming covered and more covered and totally covered. Wishing to be again in, in direct contact with Krishna. So it's a meditation, bringing the mind to Krishna requires then also regulating your activities in such a way that they're elevating and purifying. So it's, it's, it's essential. It's, it's not optional, it's essential that you're, we, we become pure in action. And pure in action has something to do with the, the intention behind the action as well as the action itself. And then no one can be pure in action who is not pure in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. These four, these are the, um, the animal propensities, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. And there, there are ways to regulate these activities so that they're, they fall into the category of pure as opposed to impure. In, a, in very simple expression, these are our four regular principles. Eating. Not, not exactly corresponding. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. They, we, they, they, the way to purify them is to get dedicate them to Krishna's service. It very much connects with the Bhagavatam discussion in the morning with Devahuti, she, she did what you, what you need to do to maintain the body and her mind was fixed upon the personality of Godhead Vishnu, who happened to be her son. To get to that, that pure mind, pure action, pure in eating, sleeping, mating and defending pure in the urges of the body. Um, the, 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 the Bhagavatam process is regular hearing. Go on regularly hearing. Srinvata Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. We discussed this earlier today. Ridyan Taksto Hyubhadrani Vidhunoti Suritsatam. We become cleansed inside. So we cleanse outside and then cleanse inside and that way at least some standard of cleanliness is being maintained just by regular bathing and regular internal cleansing. And progressively, progressively striving to um, come to the stage of rapt attention. Now something that came up during my visit to Detroit just before um, coming here to Chicago or Naperville was uh, a, a discussion in Detroit about a section of Padma Purana I mentioned in the afternoon class that the the other Puranas look to the Bhagavad Purana as the 
most excellent amongst all of them. And there's a whole section, long section, in Padma Purana, it's called Bhagavata Mahatmya. It's just glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam. There's similar sections in, in other portions of the Puranas, but this one is particularly interesting and appropriate because embedded within it is a description of same topic. What are qualifications needed in order to get the full benefit of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam? Then there's four. So there's a long story and there's a short version of the long story. So I'm going to do the short version. And then these four characteristics. We'll discuss them. So the, the, the context is um, Narada Muni is being asked to describe um, the glories of the Bhagavatam, I believe. So all of us, we're in the association of devotees. Somehow good fortune came and we have devotee association. And in that devotee association, we're doing devotional activity. Sadhu Sangha Bhajana Kriya. And we would like to have our devotional activity become more effective, more receive a greater condition of purity as a result. That's what we'd like. And there's conditions that help, and in the, in the, the Padma Purana describes this in a very interesting way. Um, there's two sons of a Brahmana and his good wife. And Atma Deva is the name of the Brahmana. And Dundali is the name of his wife. So the long narration tells how it happened. But one of the sons was Gokarna. Gokarna, literally because he had ears that looked like cow's ears. Go Karna. And um, he was a very, really good quality young man and very learned in, in the Bhagavatam. His brother was a stepbrother. It was his sister's, excuse me, Dunduni. Dunduki, Dundali's sister's son and she was raising her sister's son so her own son Gokarna it's a little detailed but Gokarna and Dundali's sister's son and Dundukari and Dundukari was um, strange and he got worse than strange. He became wicked and very sinful. And he, he died and became a ghost. Then he came back to the village where Atma Dev and Dundali lived and was spooking everybody, haunting. And so Gokarna felt badly for his brother that he was stuck in this ghostly condition. And so, in honor of his departed brother, or stepbrother, he uh, began a narration of Srimad Bhagavatam that went on for seven days. Saptaha. And at the end of the seven days, something very amazing happened. The ghost Dundukadi manifested a, a celestial form right in front of everybody's vision, all the people that were attending the Bhagavat recitation. And Dundakari came before his brother Gokarna and was offering obeisances again and again and audibly expressing his gratitude and appreciation for having narrated Srimad Bhagavatam so nicely. 
And then, much to everybody's amazement, a Vaikuntha Vimana descended. And Dundukari, now in this celestial form, mounted the Vaikuntha Vimana was being taken back to Godhead. Oh, Gokarna said, wait. <laughs> What's going on? Expressing to the, um, the, the word that's used in the Padma Purana is messengers of Hari. So, you know, in the Bhagavatam, it's um, like Kuntavasis. Vishnu Dutas, Vishnu Dutas, so, but messengers of Hari. And so Gokarna said, before you leave, could you explain why my stepbrother, who is so sinful and so wicked, so bad, he's going back to Godhead, and all the other people who are also here, they heard the same thing, and why... Could you explain why the others aren't getting the same uh, result that Dundukari is? And it's a very important question. It has to do with you know, the quality of hearing. So the agents of Hari said, the difference of result comes from the difference of the quality of hearing. And then specifically they said, every evening doesn't say how he did it in a ghost body, but every evening he would engage in his worship. And while he was engaged in his worship, he reflected deeply within his heart on what he had heard. So putting these two things together, he's received this benefit of becoming purified and going back to Godhead. They went on. Um, he concentrated his mind, Dundukari, in a ghost body. He concentrated his mind every night on what he had heard. He wasn't just taking notes. He was concentrating his mind on what he heard. And then they, they go on to say, knowledge which is unstable is lost. You know the, the saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. Maybe sometime you become inspired with certain verses of Bhagavad Gita and you learn the verses of Bhagavad Gita and then you can recite them and even explain them and some time passes, you don't use them, you, you forget them. Or anything else. Spiritual knowledge is meant to be carefully heard with concentration, meditating upon those words, applying those words, letting those words enter into your heart and into your life. But if it's not done like that, it's, it's flickering, unstable, chanchala, like the mind. It doesn't stay in the mind. You have to concentrate the mind on that teaching, the message, the sound vibration. And as is the learning of someone who has been inattentive. Japa done without concentration or hearing advice which comes from a doubtful source are both wasted. There's this nice expression when Sandipani Muni finds Krishna and uh, Sudama in the forest the next morning after all that storm, um, he is so happy to see that they're safe and he blesses them saying the, 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 the duty of students or disciple is to sacrifice everything for the spiritual master, 
their words, their body, all their possessions, everything, and you've done that. So I give you this blessing, benediction, that you'll remember all your mantras <laughs> and the meaning of them throughout your life. You'll never forget. That's, that's a great benediction. Normally it's a lot of work to, or sincere effort. And then gradually, gradually this capacity comes. Now some people, I've noticed, some people have much greater aptitude for remembering what they've heard. And some people, it's a struggle. But that aptitude to remember what they've heard starts with rapt attention in hearing. It's one of the characteristics of intelligence is you have a sharp memory because an intelligent person can hear distinctly something and then it sticks. Not only in the mind, but the intelligence has assimilated it, the, the, the message, the meaning, the force of the message. And so it sticks. Sign of intelligence. And something to help messages stick is you repeat them and you also, uh, like we were discussing this afternoon, you can share and explain, discuss with others in a small group, and you practically apply. You, when you practically apply and explain to others, even you know, worldly academic people say, these are ways to help something stick. First, they say, take notes. If you just hear without taking notes, it's fine. But if you take notes, it helps. This is like academic work. And then after taking notes, if you review the notes, it helps to make it stick. And if you try to explain to others what's in your notes, it helps. Now, similar to what Dundakari did, and which helped him get maximum benefit, fully attentive, and he concentrated, concentrated his mind on what he had heard. A land without Vaishnavas is worthless, as is the offering of oblations by a person without qualifications, or charity given to an unlearned person, or a family which has no ethical principles. Sounds like Kali Yuga. little sharing. Um, one of the devotees here in the room helped me put together a presentation on narcissism that I've been presenting in colleges. So just a little sharing. Um, I became interested in the subject when somebody sent me a national public radio interview of a San Diego State University professor. And this is her field. She, the interviewer was asking her about, about the subject, and I learned a lot about the subject, and it's true. Uh, and from that, there's, there's a lot of research in this area. It's, it's, those that study it call it epidemic, meaning like widespread influence amongst many people. And one of the characteristics of particularly millennials Millennials means, you know, from born from the year 2000. Whoops. 2000? No, that's the current ones. From when? Huh? 84. 84. So if you were born after 1984, you may fit in that category. And the college students all fit in that category. And... Several college students, American kids, Indian kids, and you know, Russian kids, came afterwards and said, "This is exactly what's going on in my life." So, it's or uh, making the outside nonconformist, and there's nothing inside, like this saying, "Everything's in the store window. There's nothing in the store." And 
characteristic of the influences in this age is abandonment of codes of ethics or norms of society in a you know deliberate defiance mood, like rebellious kind of a mood, or I don't care kind of a mood, and marking oneself some external way as unique and different. You know, how many holes you have in your face with some metal piece sticking out or something, or tattoos or all kinds of things that are you know, like asserting your individuality without, within, without any regulation of norms of society. I mean, it's not that inherently any of those things are particularly... Anyway, there's nothing... In, the, 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 the absence of something inside and the emphasis upon appearances outside and disregard for norms of society. Anyway, that's one of the prevalent... You, you parents wondering what your kids are experiencing in school these days... That's what's going on. It's one of the trends. Exactly what's being said here. In order to obtain the fruits of hearing the Bhagavatam, here's the four. One should have faith in the words of the spiritual master. The Sanskrit is Vishvaso Guru Vakyeshu. I'll go through these a few times. Vak means speech. Like, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Vak means sound, speaking. So, Guru Vakyeshu, one should have Vishvasa, or art, st implicit faith in the instructions of the spiritual master, the words of the spiritual master. So, the, the broadcaster person. There's the message that's being broadcast, and there's the broadcaster, the mouthpiece, the, the, you know, the, the servant, the instrument of the Bhagavatam's message. <clears throat> One should have an attitude of humility about his own worth, which is the opposite of what this narcissism standard is. You have a highly inflated sense of your own worth derived from many sources. Svasmin dinatve bhavena Dina means humble or fallen. Dinatve, having the quality of humility. Bhavena, bhavana and Swasman, when when regards when when has it you have a realistic assessment, a humble and realistic assessment of one's own position. You know, it's a, it's a negative, it's a positive way of saying prideless. You have a realistic and humble evaluation of one's own worth. Humble, humility, prideless. He should be victorious over the flaws of the mind. Mano dosha jayas. Jaya. Jaya means victory. And dosha means fault. Here's using the word flaw. Mano dosha jaya. So there, there has to be monitoring of what your mind does. Not just it goes wherever it wants to go. I mean, the mind's very strong and it's going to go where it wants to go. We all have experience. But there, there's um, a way of controlling it. It's, it's called practice. <laughs> Constant practice and detachment, according to the Krishna's message in Bhagavad Gita. Arjun indicates to Krishna this process of dhyan, the process of dhyan is impossible. It's, it's, it's easier to control a raging wind than control the mind. 
Balavat, so strong, and Chanchala, so flickering. How to control the mind? Krishna says, yes, you're right. But it's possible by constant practice and detachment. So this is this mana dosha jayas chaiva. It's, 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 I call it brahminical work. You have to, to be, to get the, the, the benefit, full benefit of devotional practice, chanting, hearing, Srimad Bhagavatam, and the other activities of bhakti. There's brahminical work, and this, the part of the brahminical work is outside, and part of it is inside. It, it doesn't, it's not okay just to, to, to semi-control the mind, or let the mouth go, and the mind goes anywhere it goes. Not okay. It's, it's, there's discipline involved, internal and external. And then finally, unswerving concentration on the topics he is hearing. Katayam nishchala matihi. There's this word matihi again. The nishchala, chala and nishchala, flickering and non-flickering. Nishchala matihi. On concentration of the mind, on katayam. We, we have busy lives. As a sannyasi, I have a busy life. What to speak of all of you who have careers in school and as well as everything else, sadhana and cooking and cleaning and this thing and that thing. And there's so many things. So it, it's, it's easy to get distracted. It's, it's hard to remain focused. And therefore, um, our, the, the host of this afternoon's program we're sharing. Uh, in her youth, she did lots of different things that were spiritual pursuits without listing them. And each one she found was beneficial, but it was, it was, it was not enduring, it wouldn't stay with her. And as soon as she began, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So I said, I have the exact same experience. I did so many things. But chanting of Hare Krishna, it's, it's so powerful. Of course, one of the things that make it seem less powerful or over time is due to inattentiveness, the, uh, the satisfaction derived from chanting may diminish, and that's because of offense the offense of inattentiveness. So we really have to go way to the other side of attentiveness. And even if the mind wants to wander or isn't feeling, you know, a nice feeling or something like that, it must strive to be attentive in any case. It's a, it's, it's a must. Concentrate the mind. In this case, it's speaking of hearing the Bhagavatam's message you know, word by word and sentence by sentence and verse by verse and purport by purport and go over it again and go over it again and go over it again and let it, let it go inside. That you try to receive the, the force, the power, the potency, the fullness, the message. And this way, like Prabhupada is saying in this other purport, you can see Krishna in every page. with rapt attention. So I'll, I'll complete the, the, the little narration and then we'll circle back and go over these four again just to, to help them stick. So the rest of the narration continues. Gokarna, the, the reciter of the Bhagavatam, is very happy to hear this nice instruction. And then the agents of Hari say, you want some good news? 
next time when you recite Srimad Bhagavatam, because you've just heard this, you've just seen this happen with your stepbrother, you're going to listen much more attentively. And you know what? You're going to go back to Godhead too. And so that's what happened. The following month, as the agents of um, the Vishnu Dutas descended with their Vimana, singing the, the names of the Lord, they planned a Bhagavat discussion the next month. And right in the midst of that Bhagavat discussion the next month, or at the conclusion of it, rather, the personality of Godhead came himself, not only the agents of Hari, but Hari himself. In fact, it says Govinda. And when he, the Lord arrived, he blew upon his conch, in, just like in, in the beginning of the Kurukshetra battle. And everyone was stunned to hear the sound of his conch. And he approached Gokarna and embraced him. And when he embraced him, his body became transformed into a Vaikuntha form. And as his form was transformed, all the other persons who were hearing the, the Bhagavat discussion, they also transformed. And so many Vaikuntha Vimanas descended. So this section concludes with this. One may perform penances for many lifetimes and not obtain residence in Goloka, the fruit of listening to the Bhagavatam. Just as all the citizens of Ayodhya were taken by Ramachandra back to Ayodhya, to the spiritual Ayodhya, by the Lord's mercy, anyone who listens to the Bhagavatam will be taken to his transcendental abode for the mercy of Sri Krishna is present in the account of his pastimes. When he recites the Bhagavatam, as well as those who listen, will have the great fortune of obtaining this divine reward. This is, now this is Padma Purana speaking about Srimad Bhagavatam. Not speaking about hearing Padma Purana. <laughs> it's remarkable. So there's qualitative hearing of the Bhagavatam, or reading of the Bhagavatam, qualitative everything, qualitative japa. And so let's go over what these four qualifications are again. Anybody can remember? First one? Vishvasa Guru Vakeshu. Vishvasa Guru Vakeshu. Very good. So that's... Um, having full faith in the speaker. It's similar to Nashta Prayeshu, Abhadreshu, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Not the same, similar from Canto 1, Chapter 2, Bhagavatam. Nashta Prayeshu, Abhadreshu. Abhadras become Nashta very quickly by nityam bhagavata sevaya. So in the purport, Prabhupada explains, there's two bhagavatas. There's the book and there's the person, bhagavata. So we serve the person bhagavata by hearing and we serve the book bhagavata by reading. And then we serve them by carrying out what you've heard and what you've read. So it has to be faith in the, the, the message from the book and the person delivering the message, that they're transparently delivering the message. And when there's faith, then there's a f greater effectiveness in that process of hearing. Say it the other. It's weaker if faith is weak. 
So although the, other, the others were hearing the Bhagavatam, this stepbrother who was hearing somehow had faith and he demonstrated that faith according to the messengers of Hari. In the evening, he was doing his worship and he, his mind was carefully considering the messages heard during the day. It's important. Again, our lives are busy and we're distracted and so many things to do. But if you make that a principle that you live by, even when you're doing other things, you're in the kitchen, you're doing some cleaning, you're doing some this thing and that thing, you'll see that your mind is going to those messages because you've heard with faith. It's not, it's not a matter of uh, like a mechanical memorization thing. It's, it's a faith thing. It's a devotional thing. Because I want, to, I want to make this connection with the personality of Godhead again. So hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. There's potencies within that, those messages and you contemplate them. Second one. Humility. Dinatve. Bhavana. Having a, not an inflated estimation of oneself, but a humble estimation of oneself or one's worth. Humility. It's common sense. What's, what's the, what, the yeah. commonly, not everywhere, but commonly, persons that are highly intelligent are often proud. And a real symptom of a person who is really intelligent is they're very humble. The, the example is given, when a tree is laden with fruits, it, the weight of the fruit, it bows. So this other kind of academic knowledge or scholarly knowledge isn't really what knowledge is. There must be humility at the, at the front end. Otherwise, how can you receive in this descending matter? You're depending upon your ascending powers. And that's not how you're going to get deeper, true, lasting, eternal knowledge. You use your faculty of, of intelligence, but humility to, to understand it properly takes time to properly cultivate humility and to properly understand. So, svasmin dinatve bhavana. Then the third one? Manadosha. What's the whole line? You remember it. You're looking at it. You remember it. You heard it also already. She's oh, from huh? She's from my AP. We had Mataji's morning Shrimad This was in the morning Bhagavatam class. Oh, okay. You didn't tell me that, <laughs> huh? Huh? Last year. Last year. You, you, you repeated the message again. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's a nice message worth hearing again and again, isn't it? Mano dosha. Dushta mana. <laughs> oh, wicked mind. Emona Durmati Sangsara Bhitori. This is Bhakti Thakur. One of his Sharanagati songs of humility. Oh, wicked mind. It's not. Anyway, 
It's, it's not a matter of self-deprecation. It's a matter of not having an inflated sense. The reality is we, we're foolish. We've misused free will moment to moment to moment to moment to moment for un, unlimited amounts of time. And we're struggling and struggling and it's it's very foolish. So managing, controlling, dealing with the the faults of the mind. It's it's essential. And then somebody else please, the last one. <laughs> Yeah, constant attention on while hearing. Katayam nishchalamati. At least practicing. You know, it's 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 similar to um, Burijan's formula of japa. Starts with one mantra at a time. You know, be 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 present with the the sound that you're hearing. It's kind of obvious, but it's, it's, these are principles. And the, the, the message here is how to get the maximum benefit, full benefit, from associating with Srimad Bhagavatam. So since you've, a number of you at least, have already heard this, any points that you wanted to explore further or discuss or any... Just any discussion at all? You want to hear again which? You want to hear the purport again? You want to hear the purport again? Sure. Well, the first part of the purport is um, don't hear from the wrong people. And the Sanskrit term that he's um, strengthening or supporting is nivishta. It's, it's perfect attention, nivishta. Huh? Rapt attention. But yeah, the word for word is perfectly attentive. Rapt attention is the translation. First line of the purport. One can or certainly see directly the presence of Lord Sri Krishna in the pages of Bhagavatam if one has heard it from a self-realized great soul like Shukadeva Goswami, then who to not hear from. Simple hearing from the right source, simple hearing is not all. One must realize the text with proper attention. The word nitvishta means that Sutta Goswami drank the juice of the Bhagavatam through his ears. That is the real process of receiving Bhagavatam. One should hear with rapt attention from the real person and then he can at once realize the presence of Lord Krishna and every page. The secret of knowing Bhagavatam is mentioned here. No one can give rapt attention who is not pure in mind. No one can be pure in mind who is not pure in action. No one can be pure in action who is not pure in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. But somehow or other, if someone hears with rapt attention from the right person, at the very beginning one can assuredly see Lord Krishna in person in the pages of Bhagavatam. 
That's what you wanted, just to hear it again? Yes? That's your question? Just want to hear something about the importance of chanting. Ah, okay, okay. Well, I'll just repeat what our host this, this afternoon said. Many, many different disciplines. I tried this one, that one, the other one, and you know, they're, they're named ones. I won't necessarily need to name them. And there was something beneficial, but it was always insufficient. And it would, it would evaporate quickly. There's something about that this Maha Mantra, there's something about the names of the Supreme Lord. There's a, there's a spiritualizing influence that the others just don't have and it's, it's, it sustains. She was saying, within a few months I was chanting 16 rounds and it wasn't because I was chanting 16 rounds because I, there was some sense of duty or obligation. I was really looking forward to it. In fact, you know, by the end of the day, I was just, I couldn't wait till the next morning for the, the, the chanting again because of the, 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 the spiritual charge and boost. It's, so it's maha mantra, especially for this particular age, very important, no more effective means, according to scripture and, and practical experience. So it, it's, it, it's like, its importance is, it's taking a bath inside. I mean, some people don't bathe. I, don't, I didn't read it, but there was an article in the New York Times about what happens if you don't bathe for a month. <laughs> I didn't read it. But I was visiting once in, in Beijing, and it was just after, it was in the spring, so just after the winter, and somebody had come from northern part of China, right near the Mongolia border, and he was visiting in Beijing, and just, you know, some personal discussion, and he commented, you know, it's so that, that um, I was describing I had visited in Dongbei, that's northeast, like New England for the United States. And I, the places where I visited, they said the snow goes up to the roof of the house. And they have like in the house, they have coal furnaces that you sit on because it's so cold. And I was just guy. It was summer, but I, I I can't imagine living in that condition. And he said it's it's like that where I live, and uh, I, I forget exactly how it came out. But he said it's it's not uncommon for me and people that live here that we don't bathe for six or seven months. I tried not to react. <laughs> I said something, well, now that you're associating with devotees, I'm sure that you'll get, you know, an understanding of the importance to take bath more regularly. <laughs> but, for, you know, for most of us, you know, you don't forget to bathe or neglect to bathe even if it's cold. And, or brush your teeth. You know, you, you make the outside clean. And so the importance of chanting is you make the inside clean. Chaita Dharpa Namarjanam. And by, you know, there's what, what happens if you don't and there's what happens if you do. The, the, there, there's so much greater clarity in everything inside 
just from regular chanting. The mind is more clear. You're able to concentrate more. You're more effective in what you do. You're happier about what you're... It's just, of course, it requires attentively, not just um, physically or mechanically chanting, but when trying to focus the, your attention on the sound of Krishna's name, it's very, very potent. Just like, again, from this discussion this afternoon, yoga is becoming, all over the world, very popular. Very popular. I mean, it's one of the main venues in China now is for the devotees to present Krishna consciousness at yoga studios. And they're all over the place. It's mostly ladies. But all over the place. And, and many of the teachers, they've gone to India, unfortunately, and gotten trained by some Mayavadi yoga teacher. Then they bring their Mayavadi teachings back along with the yoga practice. People want the yoga practice. But they also get polluted with... Anyway, it's very popular, yoga. And meditation is similarly becoming... It largely, it's a feel-good experience. You feel good after yoga, and you feel, your mind feels relaxed after meditation. But this, this, this spiritual aspect, literally connecting with the supreme aspect is most effective in Maha Mantra. And even, you know, I regularly do this. Invite people, you, you're doing such and such discipline. Take side by side the chanting of Hare Krishna Mantra. It's what I did. And see what the practical effect. And it's very, it's, it's, it's apparent. It's palpable. This requires a commitment to do so and being attentive while you're doing mantra meditation. I've often thought, like years and years and years, of, how do people do it that don't chant? How do they go through every day? I can't, I can't, you know, imagine. I, I, the only thing I can think is there's a certain covering that allows them to go through every day. You know, like being in, certain to, certain amount of insensitivity to what's happening. Now, it's not to say people that don't chant are, are callous people. It's just that the, the subtlety, and there's some people that chant and they're, they're not so subtle either. But the, the, there's, a, there's a power that's, a, that's accessible through chanting that refines um, your inner life. Taken up properly, it's transforming. It's the primary means, another, it's, it's, it's the right medicine for this age. It's the primary means for this age. It's like going into a pharmacy and say, could I have some medicine? What's the pharmacist going to say? Where's the prescription? Well, I, I just didn't, some medicine. I'm sorry, but we can't give medicine without a prescription. So, for this age, it's to, to, to prescribe medicine for the, the illness or the, the, the particular condition that people are subjected to in this age of Kali. This particular mantra amongst all means of deliverance, it's the most effective. That's the doctor's prescription. So we take it and feel the effect. Yes? Uh, Guru Maharaj, you mentioned that one has to realistically assess uh, one's what? One has to reali realistically, realistically assess, assess one's own worth. One's own worth, yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Is it in relation to hearing or in overall lessons that you Overall. Mentioned? Overall. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
my understanding of that's what's intended. It's your, your, your own self-worth. It's not, there's lots of things it's not. It's having a realistic assessment as opposed to an overinflated, it's, you know, pridelessness, humility and pridelessness. Amanitvam, madambitvam. In language of Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Um, Guru Maharaj, certain people have the photographic memory. Some people do. And they can um, attend, you know, when they hear to lectures, they can grasp and they can remember. But not everyone can do that. Of course. Are there, are there any tips you can give for them? Tips. Yes. <laughs> You got your you got your little device. It takes pictures and records, right? Practice and and um, well, brahmacharya celibacy is something that also is very very helpful or necessary. It helps make the mind strong and sharp and clear. And, and alternatively, isn't. I mean, something that's coming to mind because of preparing for the Ayodhya Yatra is Rishi Shringa, when the, when the, 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 the ladies of uh, the king went to lure him, his father noticed, you can't concentrate the same. What happened? He said, well, some, some boys came because he didn't know the difference. Municharis, some boys of, from the forest, they came and that's all that happened. He said, no more Munichari association for you <laughs> because you can't concentrate it like you used to. And it, it's something that can be trained. It's, some persons are it's gifted, and w one can be trained. And you know, a life of uh, s discipline, austerity, simplicity, etc., helps helps to hear and remember. I have about two questions, Maharaj. You have about two. <laughs> uh, as uh, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu was mentioning, some, uh, when we talk about rapt attention, um, it's one thing to uh, remember everything in mind, but it's completely different thing to take, it, take the messages to heart. So that ha that the, the, you're referring to rapt attention. Now you're referring to remembering. Which is it? Uh, I, remembering I, or rapt attention? I'm of the understanding, Maharaj. When one gives rapt attention, one is able to remember properly. Well, you can you can you can hear properly, then you can understand properly, and then comes remembering. That it, it's. One leads to the other, yes, like Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. I'm, I'm, I'm making a point about this because um, you were there for class this morning and mentioned in verse 26 of the last chapter of what, what Devahuti was able to do was she was in Samadhi, but Samadhi is number eight in the Ashtanga Yoga system. And, be, and number seven is what leads to Samadhi, was Dhyan. Her mind was fixed, and Samadhi is trance. So that Dhyan in the Ashtanga Yoga system, Prabhupada says in the purport, 
is comparable to smaranam, from hearing and chanting. So the rapt attention leads to smaranam, remembering. But it's not, they're not, it's not the same. It's two different categories. I'm just trying to be clear what your question is before I try to answer your question. My question is, Maharaj, uh, instead of just uh, having the messages in mind, how do I take them to heart and apply them? Oh. <laughs> we had this, I'm smiling because we had this exact topic in this little seminar we had in Vrindavan, and it's, it's, the, it's one of the classes that I'm planning to give in Gita Nagari. You're asking me to give the Gita Nagari class and <laughs> right now. But it's, it's going to take an hour to give the class. And there's many elements to it. So can I just answer by saying stay tuned for the class in Gita Nagari? <laughs> The, the, there, there must, for, for transformation of heart, you asked this question this morning, and I, and I said the, that verse from the Canto 2, chapter 3, verse 24. I wasn't there today morning. Huh? I wasn't there today morning, Maharaj. Who was? Who asked that question? Last, last evening I was there. Today morning I wasn't there. Okay. Okay. Two, three, twenty-four. Remember that one? Steel-framed heart and transformation of heart. And the, and the root is the fences. Remember that? Okay. So that was evening. I get all mixed up. I don't know if it's day or night. Second question. Can okay. I ask? But there's there's a longer one. You. You read that purport. Uh, when discussing third point, Maharaj, you said that one should be aware of the flaws of the mind, and uh, mind can be controlled by practice of detachment. Well, that's what Krishna says. I was trying to understand, Maharaj, what is the difference between uh, detachment and renunciation in this context? It's the same. Exactly what Krishna says. <coughs> nice going. What is called renunciation or detachment is the same as attachment to Krishna. You have to be attached to something. So if you become attached to Krishna, you're detached from the temporary. You may be engaged in it. It's not detached doesn't mean I'm out of here or I don't care. Detached means it's not determining your ruling your life, your happiness and distress and what you're all about. Detached. You act with duty but without attachment. Because of attachment to Krishna. So you, you hit it right on the head. Good going. That's what detachment is. Attachment to Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes. Qualities for hearing. Quality for hearing. I mean, sorry, the four. Uh, These four, okay. Yeah. What about like, how can one prepare when we are speaking Bhagavatam to somebody? What preparation do we need? Or what qualities? Same. It's, you know, it, it, it's the mood of service. This is, this, you know, having a, a proper conception of yourself. I'm an instrument. That's, I, when I'm preparing, let me think of the function of being the instrument of Krishna's sound vibration. And it's not just la 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 la. You know, it's not just 
learning you know, the, the rudiments of projecting your voice nicely, although that's nice, but being the instrument of Krishna. So I want to receive so that I can transmit as the instrument. To the degree that I can realize that message, all the more. Of the, but that requires purity. And so that, that's part of being the instrument, is striving for purity. And then you perform the service. It's, it's, it, however perfectly, imperfectly, you're performing a service. The, the hum, mood of humble service. Become familiar with the subject matter as much as you can. That takes practice, some time. But the purpose is not, you know, to do a razzle dazzle. The purpose is to be a transparent broadcaster of the message. Recently, Badahari was here. Yes? Did he come to Naperville? Yes. And what does it feel like to be around Badahari Prabhu? And other people chant. And other people speak about chanting and speak you know, about the songs and so forth. But there's, it's not just charming. It's powerful. It goes in. And it, it has a lot to do with his being very humble and just receiving and giving. You know, there's, there's a period of, let's say, because he has a music background, he shared this, he and his wife shared this with me once. Without the detail, he was on his, he was on his, on his way to a fantastic music career. And he came back, he was touring in Europe and this and that, and came back and in the airport got a Bhagavad Gita. He read it. He went to the temple. He went back to his house and moved in. Next day. <laughs> <laughs> so he, you know, he was detached from those. All, but he, so it, naturally, in the beginning, the musicality of the kirtan is kind of going to take somebody's attention. But he's way past that. Next time he comes, just when he sits down to the harmonium and starts to sing, take a picture and watch the illumination just start to spread. Literally. I mean, his face becomes bright in the, the area around it. He's luminous. So like that, that's how you prepare. Just be the instrument of Krishna and Krishna's message. Thank you, Mara. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Maharaj, um, we talk about that uh, steel-framed heart very often. Steel-framed heart. heart. Yes. Uh, but we have also another verse which says, uh, like the sun's rays um, removes the fog, the heart uh, becomes immediately cleansed when we take to chanting and, uh, you know, reading Srimad Bhagavad, etc. So, uh, why that verse is not, you know, as practical as the steel-framed heart? <laughs> Everybody is struggling with the steel-framed heart. Nobody is experiencing the uh, sun. Uh, sun well, I, I wouldn't say nobody. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, my hearing, I feel always the focus goes to steel-framed heart. Okay. Nobody much talks about the uh, sun's rays lifting. Well, I don't the say nobody talks about. It. I, I disagree. <laughs> Sorry about that. I disagree. I just spoke about Bhattacharya's chanting. 
You want to know the preponderance? Why too much? So much talking about the other and. Well, wait a minute. You know, I I, I don't I, I disagree with you. She just asked, you know, what's the importance of chanting? And I spent, you know, some time speaking about not steel framed heart, right? I disagree with you. There's a stage of bhakti, an art and vritti stage, where we, we we are supposed to not become an artha conscious, but Krishna conscious of recognizing what are the doshas in the mind and what what, is, what are the obstacles for our receiving the, the fullness of the power of the holy name. So the tension doesn't go to the negative, the tension goes to the power of the holy name. But there's obstacles, and that's reality. And we need, have to deal with reality, along with carefully, attentively focusing on the holy name. I beg to differ with you. Yes? Well, if if I've understood your question correctly, it, you broaden to um, how how am I to evaluate whether I'm advancing in Krishna consciousness? You, you know, the application is chanting, but you know, advancing in spiritual life. My chanting has become qualitative or improved. Um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's answer I like very much. It's twofold. The um, attraction for the temporary is diminishing. Asat Trishna. The te- the, a- Thirst for the impermanent is diminishing. And not, not just because I'm trying to stay away from it, but it's the attraction is diminishing. And the converse, the attraction for hearing is increasing. Like this host, it was a nice statement, I, I really look forward, each night, I look forward to getting up early and chanting again. Bhakti Vinod Thakur recommends for, the, for a, a, a sadhaka to do that every evening, is to, you know, two things. How did the day go? What went well? What didn't go so well? What are some things that I can do better tomorrow? And you, so your mind is fixed on what I can do better tomorrow. And um, to look forward, anticipate the opportunity, again, to commune or be in Krishna's association through his holy name. And take rest with those thoughts. And when you wake up, those thoughts are there. And you're looking forward to chanting. So when, when one is looking forward to chanting... You're moving in the right direction. We may do because it's regulative. And when you're looking forward to do that which is regulative, you're advancing. And that's going to ha- help on the other side. Like this, his question about attachment to Krishna, detachment from matter. Same basis. Another is the inclination, the eagerness for service is increasing. And it shouldn't be so much that I, now I neglect my chanting because I have so much service to do. But eagerness to looking forward to the opportunity for some service. And when some service comes, this is part of humility, but it's an aspect of it, service. Some service comes and I'm, I, I, I like And the devotional element of that service is also strengthening, not just staying busy, but 
the devotional element, attraction for hearing. Okay. Shri the Prabhupada ki jai. Thank you for braving the storm and making it here. Aha, uh -huh. there's a small enough group, I think I have enough. This is Radha Kunjabi Hari Mahaprasadam from Detroit.